Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma and Brian E. Roach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and wouldn't you know, um, off the air here, Brian was saying, are you ready, Freddie? And I'm not Freddie. I don't know no Freddies unless we're talking like Freddie Mercury or something like that. And I don't know him either. Just, uh, you know, uh, anyways. All the Freddies I know are dead, too. <laughs> Freddie Prinze, <laughs> Freddie Mercury, they're all dead. You know, I, you Freddie know Prin- you wait, Freddie Prinze isn't dead. Senior. Prince, oh, senior. Yeah, not junior. But anyways, folks, uh, coming at you with another uh, preview for the upcoming Steelers versus Cleveland Browns game this Sunday. My name is Joe Kuzma. And joining me is my brother from another mother, a one, not Freddie, Brian E. Roach. Hey, what's going on, my friend? Happy New Year's to you. Is it really? Is it happy New Year's? You know, it is New I Year's. Almost, I was going to tweet this on New Year's Day. I was going to go, you know what today is? Monday or Sunday, or whatever day it was. I was just like, that's all it is. I don't, you know, time means nothing to me. But, you know, happy happy next week to you. <laughs> well, you know what? And I, I know I might sound like Larry David, like, with all this. We were just rehearsing Jerky Boy skits here in the background. At least I was. Brian's eyes were. Familiar. I, yeah. I wasn't It's like, Uncle Freddy's dead, but uh, I'm going to break your legs. But anyways, um, yeah, uh, Good Morning is one that I think of, like, Larry David, if you know, is, like, just this... He's kind of the curmudgeon. You talk about the shout at the clouds type guy and like, eh, pretty good, you know? So when somebody said good morning, that's the way I always used to feel. I'm like, what's so good about it? And I guess if you're, you know, not six feet under, then that's probably a start. The sun has rised and you've gotten a chance to see it. But usually like I'm, I am a miserable, I am not a morning person whatsoever. I require lots of fuel, lots of caffeine, lots of coffee, the stuff that you don't like, Brian. And you know, I'm good with caffeine, not just not coffee. Yeah. And it's a good thing that we usually don't record in the morning, but it doesn't really matter because something that I know you also strongly dislike is the Cleveland Browns, the clowns. I am so, um, I'm, I'm kind of thrilled that this is on deck for Sunday because at one point you probably looked at this maybe four or six weeks ago, this game on the schedule and said, eh, eh. You know, more Larry David, eh. And now I'm looking at it, and you've got the 8-8 eight and eight Steelers, the 7-9 and nine Cleveland Browns, who are in the doghouse, pun intended, and the Steelers beat them and thoroughly put them in the doghouse. Otherwise, if they get swept, then both teams end up 8-9. and nine. But a, a potential playoff berth at stake for the Pittsburgh Steelers, as well as not being in the basement and Mike Tomlin's spotless to date, 15 seasons, maybe soon to be 16 seasons of at least 500 or better. No actual losing seasons, blemishes on his coaching career, on his record. The players have both of these items to play for on Sunday, aside from it being in your usual AFC North affair. Maybe a uh, you could still consider Cleveland a rival. And maybe the bad taste that Cleveland has left in the mouths of some of these Steelers players, TJ Watt, Cam Hayward, Minka Fitzpatrick, those that were here over the last few seasons and had the way that game ended with no one at Heinz Field, playoff game, wild card. That ain't going to be the case this Sunday. I think the fans, I think Steelers Nation will be there in full force. I think they're energi- energized. I think they're excited. And I think you are going to see a team that, a lot of others don't want to see make the postseason at this point. That's gaining momentum. Um, yeah, I would kind of agree with all that. I'm, in, you know, I'm going to start off this whole Cleveland Browns thing by not letting only the two percenters in on this. So, if you want to go to the game, I'm not going because I'm not driving in the rain in case it rains. Um, and there's a couple of other reasons. I just have other other things that are going to prevent me <laughs> from actually going to the game. If you want my tickets? Find me on Twitter. DM me. Whoever gets there first, same deal as the last time I gave away a set of tickets. Two tickets, they're yours. So fair, that's fair, the start. fair weather fan. You're even yeah, under the weather. roof. So you know what? It's, it's like work. 
my friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I know all too well how that's going. You know, yes. it, it's like everybody decided, hey, we were off for like three weeks because there's holidays. Now we want everything yesterday. And yeah, it's, it's like... What- what happens when your CEO calls you on Monday uh, night at 1030, right before you're ready to go to bed and says, oh, by the way, by the end of the week, can you completely rewrite everything? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and and this, and my, mind you, this was probably last night. <laughs> Gave you two, two full working days. Dilbert, let me tell you, we talk about a lot of things. Dilbert, that comic strip is just so spot on in so many ways. Oh, it's awesome. I love it, Dilbert. It, I, that guy, just his experience in the corporate world drawing that is amazing is just amazing but anyways brian um what else you got to say about the clowns besides you i was gonna i was Look, i was referring to the roof because if somebody else is like oh well screw it 50 percent chance of rain which i thought i saw on the yeah you will be under the roof the yes, weather uh, my tickets are under the roof yeah so, so you don't you, have to worry you know, about the rain i but do. you know you get that sideways rain and upside down rain forest gump crap uh you know if you get that well you know i can't help you but hopefully it won't be that bad anyway so yeah the, you know I was I did not despise the Browns nearly as much until they sh- signed the guy they signed. Um like I was starting to come on board of having a, a modicum of respect for the Cleveland Browns, right? Remember last year I was like, "No, I think the Browns have a solid team. I'm not in love with their quarterback, but I, I think they have a solid team. They're good defense." But, but I, I was like, I feel like they're making all those things. Forget it. I hate them again. They're an idiot. They're just terrible. Um I mean Look, they've got a, a very strong offensive line. They've got a very strong running game. I'm not on board with most of the decisions that they have made of late. Uh, I'm not on board with the Deshaun Watson signing and giving him all of the money. Um, but we will see how that continues to work out. Look, I th- it, from my mind, I think TJ is going to want I mean, th- these guys are just going to be fired up, right? Look. There is a lot riding on this game. There's pride riding on this game. They as they're not going to know. It's going to be very similar to that other Cleveland, you know, that other game that we've been talking about. So you know, on and off, where it's a potential of somebody the Steelers game's over if they've won. Watching a Miami game or watching a Patriots game on the big screen to see who wins, to see who is going to. You know, are, are all of the planets going to align? Are we going to get in? Right? It, it's very likely that's a possibility. So, you know, they're they, it's not like they don't have anything to play for. I think they're going to play hard. The the defense has come a long way in the last few weeks. Um, you know, if they can stop the run, which I think that they they should be able to do. Um, I'm not right now afraid of Deshaun Watson, um, and I think. Who knows? Maybe the uh, maybe the offense will decide not to wait till the end of the game to win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I think, and based on last year, they you've got to think that the Browns were a better team last year than they are this year. I understand yeah. the whole Watson thing, and what did we say? We we said this like repeatedly. He he's gonna be trash. I mean, maybe next year. I don't know. He had a full training camp. Maybe he gets back like the training wheels come back off the rust gets knocked off we used to give a little bit more respect to the cleveland browns that's out the window too because of their loud loud mouth fans that includes you too charles if you're tuning in so um uh, yeah the guy with the 20 27 32 whatever accusations after years of their fan base calling ben roethlisberger unsavory names over whatever one like incident when he was younger versus a guy who seems to be like just you know a predator and let's be fair there were two uh, was there two <laughs> i can't two incidents oh uh, maybe there were two but i don't know i thought i was two. thinking maybe the motorcycle thing was the other whatever oh. ben was a bonehead and at times he was still a bonehead and diva through much of his nfl career but yes. my goodness they just went and let it go like an actual dog with bone pun intended once again why are they called the dogs you know what canton was the bulldogs not cleveland like the old old school, you know, throwback team. They they like inherited this like pseudo nickname. Then they also have like a Keebler elf, which they put on the middle of their field this year. 
but their logo as you can see it here on our screen for those watching is just the helmet and it's it, not even brown it's orange it's orange like i, I understand maybe we those. should maybe they should call themselves the orange well i know that browns are elves is... and that's very well, know, intimidating the, well but, brownies the brownies yeah. like little brownies are little teeny tiny gnome like <laughs> characters they're itty itty bitty things brownies um you know uh, so I, and, and I don't really remember brownies wearing orange. I don't, I mean, why do I care? How are we getting down this path? <laughs> I don't know because I dislike everything about this franchise. They updated their jerseys a few years ago, uh, to like from old, you know, something that's in your stool orange to something that's, uh, maybe it's, it's still the same thing. It's just a darker shade of the same crap. So something that's it, it just, in what have you been eating, my friend? Uh, no, it's not me. It's, you know, I got to oh. pick up after the dog. So, I, like, when okay. you walk the dog, you know, I just can't leave it out there. I mean, I could. There's plenty of people who do that, too. Maybe but... that's why they're the dogs, because they're <laughs> dog dudes. <laughs> it's making, I, I, you know. making the connection, you know. Uh, I'm just glad this game's not in Cleveland. I hate yes. that place. It's miserable. The fan base is miserable. They're seven and nine. I honestly, you know what? We're going to review and go back to our AFC North predictions during the off season here in the coming weeks, but we were pretty spot on with a lot of this. I think you had the Bengals at like 13 wins maybe and winning the division. We said the Steelers could be a playoff team with 10 wins and here you are. If they get nine, they might be in. We said at nine, it might be rough just based on, we were thinking that based on the AFC West originally. And I think a lot of our other predictions have rung true i think yeah. i think you hit the nail on the head though uh with the first thing i think we should say about this game other than all this you know super flourish type of other things such as the mascot name they're terrible Superfluous? Colors. is that uh, yeah. the word you were trying that to was say? whatever Superfluous? i was saying yes i make them up as i go along it's a uh, gi but That's ginormous fair. i think is now in the lexicon however i so, made that word up so it, it's okay. you, you were not the originator of ginormous. i was the originator Cool beans and ginormous. I, I made both of those up. A ginormous liar you are. So, <laughs> <laughs> in fact, did you see Christmas Story Christmas by uh, yes, uh, I did. by any chance? That was funny. The, the the Scrabble scene just made me think of that. You used it in yes. a sentence, so it's a word. And so that's it's a exactly word. That's what right. I did. Super, what did I even try and say? Super flurious? Super flurious? I don't, I, I don't know. know. I don't know. Like, I, but it I don't was, mind whatever butchering. it was was wrong. <laughs> I don't mind butchering the English language. My mother does it um, quite enough. Uh, use and yins and stuff like that. Wor I, not worsh. Major, yeah. Worsh wasn't her. That was my buddy. But anyway. Worsh is my grandmother, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely the Rust Belt uh, lingo there. Uh, this clown and his guaranteed money and now how they have no draft picks, which is completely fine with me. And uh, this is the, Deshaun Watson is the reason this team, I'm not afraid of them. Now, I will say he might be a step above what the Steelers faced last week in terms of well, their offense in general. They've got uh, Cooper. they got Donovan Peoples-Jones. Watson should be able to do a little more than uh, Snoop Huntley. But I think they attacked them the same exact way. They're not going to let Nick Chubb run all over them. Uh, Kareem yeah. Hunt, he's on his yeah. way out of town. He's not going to have another contract. That dude's so like unplugged from everything that's going on right now. It's... I don't even know. Should they they give him carries? It doesn't even seem like he's appeared on the field. And I just I don't see their offense as I, being any more I, terrifying than what Baltimore just just did. Here's the difference. Amari Cooper is the difference. Yeah. Um and the difference between last week and this week is there is the potential for a passing game. If they if the rush, which has has not always gotten pressure quickly. If they give Deshaun Watson time, then Amari Cooper will get open, and he'll probably find him. Um, Donovan Peoples-Jones can get open. They're, they're, they have legitimate threats that the Ravens just didn't really have. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I will give them their due in that sense. I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of Deshaun Watson, but I do understand that he has more of a vertical threat than, you know, Hundley did, um, or to be honest, Lamar. Um, you know, this is not going to be a game where I think they can afford to play six in the box the way they did against the Ravens. Um, but they may have to, at times, they still have to stop the run, but they have to be aware much more so of the pass than they were last week. Well, if the Browns just send out like a one wide receiver, 
like a two tight end set or something like that, like the way the Ravens did, they'll attack it the same way. I, ha I, have, yes. no, I have no fear. And how much of that, you know, there was a few things I was thinking about from the post game, uh, or maybe we didn't cover as much in the post game, particularly um, Mark Robinson, Robert Splain. Uh, we mentioned the snap counts and how like uh, Robinson basically doubled up Jack and Bush combined. And speaking of, um, I didn't mention anything about Manscaped, but we do have a promo code, so stay tuned for that. But anyways. Um, I've been told dude, not to put the thing up my nose again. Yeah, that's probably not the best thing. I could get stuck. There was a meme that was floating around and it says something like, nobody should have to tell you this, but things don't go up your butt. <laughs> like uh, that was been that was shared by some uh doctor and medical folks that are my friends but uh they have some good stories anyways um yeah the if they send people's jones out there he's a go route type guy he's a deep threat cooper is uh cooper's better than i wanted to give him credit for in the offseason so i i i turned around course on that even jacoby percent to that effect was able to run this offense the reason the steelers lost was a short week and they had to play in cleveland which with mitch trubisky and basically mitch got benched and the very no, next no, game. no tj either yeah no tj also a, a huge blow so I, I like a lot of things have changed since week three with that game that was played in Cleveland. Jacoby's still coming in on some snaps, though. Uh, they they inserted him in the game, and it was like, let's say, third and one, third and two, something like that, to give, like, some type of option, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I I was, like, I was looking at that. I'm like, hey, is Kevin Stefanski, is he on the hot seat at all? You know, he, he went 11-5 and five to start all this thing. Now 8-9, and nine, potentially, at best, 8-9 and nine again this season, or he could be 7-10. and 10. I'm not going to pull the trigger that close on him, but I think next year is going to be something if they don't get anything going with uh, good old Deshaun there. And we'll look at some of Deshaun's numbers as well, uh, as well here in a second. But yeah, what do you think about that? Uh, you know, is he still the uh, coaching wonder kid that everybody <laughs> thought he was in 2020? Like how many how many coaches have the, have the Browns had in the last, you know, two weeks? Uh, yeah, whatever two it weeks. is, I'm, you know. Um, <laughs> Same guy for two saying, weeks. This is probably yeah. one of the longest tenures since like um absolutely Romeo Cornell or somebody it's, like that. Butch Davis. I don't know. What I, I guess what I'm getting at is in the 15 years Tomlin's been the Steelers head coach, the Browns have had like what all the rest of them. So you know, <laughs> in and out the door. Do I think that he should be on the hot seat? No, he only got his the quarterback that he wanted. Um, you know, <laughs> midway through the season. You give him a full season next year. If they're if they're at the bottom of the of the AFC North again, if they have a losing record, if they don't make the playoffs, year three, yeah, then he might be in deep trouble. I, I mean, they need to perform next year. They've invested their future um, in Deshaun Watson, uh, both financially and draft pick capital, and that's going to be a hard thing for them to recover from, um, especially as they start having to pay some of these other guys. Uh, you know, I. Look, I, I just don't know. I don't see it. Um, they'll, it'll be, yeah, I, I just, I guess that's my point. I wouldn't have him on the hot seat right now, but a warm seat, perhaps. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Um, I was looking through the list of former Cleveland Browns coaches just for, you know, the the giggles. Kevin Stefanski, so he's in his third year. Freddie Kitchens lasted a season. Greg Williams was an interim for Hugh Jackson for a handful of games in 2018. Hugh uh, went three and 36. Did you say and Hugh won. Jackman? I said uh, Jackson. I didn't say Hugh Jackman. <laughs> like, I thought, I'm like, when did probably, Wolverine coach this, the Browns? They, they might have the better success with yeah, Wolverine. Like, hey, get Wolverine Logan. in there. Old man yeah. Logan can get it yeah. done, maybe. Uh, uh, Mike, Mike Patton, Rob Chudzinski, Pat Shermer, Eric Mangini, and all these guys are one or two year wonders. And you had Romeo Cornell from 05 to 08. So I wasn't too far off the mark other than Hugh, but Hugh didn't make it a full three years. Butch Davis, um, as uh, they had Terry Rabisky in between for one year. And, and then, uh, cause I think Butch, I think Butch got canned too for six games. So Butch was uh, 01 to 04. So he was about the longest tenure. And then uh, Chris Palmer, of course, for that uh, two seasons when they first reinvented the wheel or whatever when they brought the team back after the original team went to Baltimore and had oodles of success and continues to be a thorn in the Steelers side the original Browns 
were the good Browns, the new Browns, not so much. And they don't have a whole lot to show for uh, over that course of time. If you go, Butch Davis had uh, one playoff game and Stefanski's had two. Everyone in between them, a big fat zero. Like, wow. And people complain about Mike Tomlin and his lack of success or, or whatever. What did I just name here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve head coaches since 1999. That, that I, I don't expect them to have like just one. Even the Steelers have had two because Cower coached until 2000. His last year was 2006. Yep. But, but yikes, man. I mean, I don't know. Like, is there anybody that bad still? Like, the Jets may not even have had that many coaches. They may they may be giving them a run for the money, but Jaguars or anybody else like that. Yeah, it's, it's just wow, yeah, I, wow. I don't know. Uh, that's it's, it's, it's like, mind they, they, mind blowing. The, they go the through quarterbacks and coaches up there. That's yep. what they go through. It's where quarterbacks and coaches go to die. <laughs> and everyone else that's tied into that, like if yes. you want if you want to go and be like an OC or an assistant coach or whatever, you're, don't don't buy a home in uh, like in Cleveland. Uh, stay away from Avon Lake and everything like that. Don't even bother. Just get, uh, just get a, oh, or not a hotel. I was gonna say maybe an efficiency hotel next to the airport out in Strongsville or something. But yeah, oh there you go. man, uh, but yeah, I Watson's numbers uh, going back to him since I had to rip on Stefanski. I still think he's sick because if they pull the trigger, let's be honest, they pull the trigger again now and pull the plug on Stefanski. It don't matter who are they gonna bring in next. Like they're just set up for failure already and everything's going to have to start all over again. And Watson with a new system. And it's all the things that kind of ruined Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield was at least serviceable. Do I think he lived up to being a top number one overall pick? No, but the Rams once again, show you as they did when Odell Beckham left the Browns and went there the year before that there's something wrong up at Lake Erie. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you, you take a look at Watson and his his stats. I know they're going to be teeny tiny on screen, but uh, I'll try and show you them anyways. Uh, 54 and a half percent completed, 131 yards, no touchdowns and a pick. Uh, they played the Bengals. They lose. Uh, that was against the Texans, by the way. That was his return game where the defense, the Texans just didn't want to win. Okay, he has about 62% completed, 276 yards, touchdown and an interception and a loss to the Bengals. Uh, they play the Ravens. They actually beat the Ravens somehow. He completes 64%, 161 with a touchdown, no picks. Throws a pick against the Saints. They lose. He attempts 31 passes. If you see the theme, if he's if he's doing pretty much anywhere in the neighborhood of like, you got to keep him in the 20s uh, right now. It's almost like handling like a rookie. These are rookie numbers. I mean, Kenny's putting up better numbers than 15 to 31, 48% complete, 135 yards, no touchdowns and a pick. Last week he threw three touchdown passes as the Washington commanders decided for some God awful reason with playoffs on their hey. radar to play Carson Wentz. And he just kept coughing up the ball and they laid it up. He only had to attempt 18 passes, but he was still three touchdowns. Listen to this, Brian, nine of 18, 50% for 169 yards. It's the only thing that's nice about it is that it nice. says 69 in it. Three touchdowns, no picks 50% completed. He threw three touchdowns on nine completions 18 attempts that's that's hot garbage so and he got sacked five times the the washington commander's defense was all over him it's the offense for the commanders that uh, did they score points yeah they scored 10 uh, pff, well look as soon as as soon as you read on the starting that Carson Wentz was starting, you knew the Browns were going to win that game. Oh, Come on. I know. It was, just, I, I mean, and it was I, played I in Cleveland. That, so I get that Taylor no, Heineke has been Sorry. very up and down for the commanders. But, I mean, my goodness, just stick with what you were doing because Carson Wentz is hot, hot garbage and has been ever since he got hurt. Um, you know, that's that's just – that was like – that that was literally – maybe we can get a quarterback in the draft. Let's lose. <laughs> I, I don't I don't understand. And I know it's Riverboat Ron, and he's gonna gamble and do dumb stuff. They did something like I, I forgot what the fourth down was that they went for it, and it was just the play was just oh, it was so bad. Like I, the only thing I saw worse than that this year is Matt Ryan struggling to still hold on to whatever glory days with the Colts. Yeah. Go back to your full screen there for a second. Uh, which one did you want? Because I may just have closed you. No, it. just you. Your, oh. your picture of you. Yeah. There you go. Lovely you. Yeah. It's me. Kenny looks like a girl 
Which one? In the, that... in the bobblehead Kenny. Bobblehead Kenny looks like a little girl. Bobblehead <laughs> Kenny is not a girl. I didn't say he was a girl. And not that there's anything wrong with being a girl, by the way. <laughs> but from a distance, Bobblehead Kenny kind of looked a little uh, girly. He's got like the... Um... He's got the Aaron Rodgers, Nick Cage thing going with the hair. And hey, yeah. we got matching hats today. I just noticed that. Yeah. Well, almost. Right, buddy. Okay. Is it, is it um, the same hat? Let me see. Yeah, it is the same hat. Oh, it is the same see. hat. Yeah, yeah that's, nice. that's pretty cool. He kind of looks like, if you get it close enough and you could see it, like the stash, it's, he looks like Sidney Crosby. Well, the, stash, the stash doesn't, like you can't see the stash from a distance. The stash <laughs> takes away the girliness, but at a distance... Uh, you see Laverne from Laverne and Shirley. Or, no, Shirley. Excuse me, not Laverne. Don't it's call, not Penny Marshall. Don't call me Shirley. It's definitely, don't it's definitely Shirley. Shirley. Yeah, yeah, you're sure, sure. Don't call me Shirley. Hey, I got another trinket here. This is why I, I despise the Browns. It's because, like, half of my friends and family just can't be Steelers fans because of growing up halfway between the two towns. So that irritates the hell out of me. Come on, folks. Come to the good side. Yeah. Um... Where were we? I can jump over to Andrews or whatever. <laughs> you got me. I, what else do you want me to pull off the wall? I got to start taking some of the Christmas good. decorations down here. I'm good. That was I it. Got I the, just happened to notice Kenny behind you, and I thought he had lipstick on, and I was like, what's going on over there? I got the um, eat, drink, and be merry and watch Steelers football. That's usually obs obscured by my my own bobblehead right here. So Yes, there you go. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Oh, man. It's a fun one. I told you I was fired up today. It's because I don't yes. like the Cleveland Browns. Did you know that? I may have said that once I, or 50 times. That. Yes. I've heard that. Yes. Yeah. I've heard yeah, I don't, I, like, like, I, I'm, I'm talking. I usually don't. I, I usually wait to, to pick my pick my poison, take my shots. But I'm feeling good about this, man. And I feel even better that I don't want to jump the shark here because I just wrote the article over at SteelCityUnderground.com yesterday, the overreactions piece, because now... Everyone else is seeing like what we kind of saw. And I know Flash was more on board with this before. Now the bandwagon's starting to topple. That's Kenny Pickett, franchise guy, the Steelers founder guy. It's still, still year one. It's early. Yeah. I mean, what you can say is there is something there. Whether that something can grow and become a true franchise quarterback, you can't do it off of a couple of last minute drives. Yes. High pressure. Yes, there's somewhat. I mean, that's what I tweeted. This is that that drive against the Ravens. That's legendary crap right there, right? And um, it's it just is. But that doesn't mean he will continue to be legendary moving forward. Um, there are a variety of reasons that guys don't succeed and become true franchise quarterbacks. I don't. I, from everything we've heard, everything we've seen. I don't want to bet against Kenny Pickett. I'm just, you know, I'm I'm I am content with him being here, right? I am no longer feeling like the draft pick was a reach. I am no longer feeling like the draft pick was incorrect, right? They clearly knew enough about the guy to see that he had this kind of moxie, this kind of spirit, this kind of I like I hesitate to say magic or, you know, it factor kind of stuff, but he's got something. Now, Let's revisit it in three more years. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's always one hit wonders and for yep. a variety of reasons. Like let's say RG3, for example, but it was more the running quarterback craze and also that horrific knee injury he took that oh, yeah. kind of derailed him. So the like I said, variety of different reasons. Um I, I'm, what I'm gonna what I'm trying to say too is is that there were so many people that were out on this, like you were saying, a reach. And when he was drafted, I, I thought they were going to go after Malik Willis, which when you got Josh Dobbs starting in his place, you want to talk about a real dumpster fire. What is it? Seven straight losses for the nice. Tennessee Titans. Like you could be in a different, going in a different direction. Now everybody's kind of changed their tune and we were sitting here. We said this since the beginning of the season, how this may go. I, I, I changed my tune. I went to training camp, et cetera, et cetera. Kenny wasn't necessarily QB. The way they split up the reps was a little different, but he was third in the pecking order, right? 
And I did yep. not like what I saw from Mitch Trubisky from day one. And then after I saw Kenny in that second preseason game against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he stands tall in the pocket, I think Arden Key like hits him. And I was just like, whoa. Then you see him come into the Jets game, and you see the zip on the ball and the anticipation. And unfortunately, there were interceptions and there's there's rookie mistakes. But that's why I wanted him to play from day one. The reason I'm bringing all this up is, is because the other path the Steelers could have went was to give up the future of their drafts and – a quarter of their cap and then you know they're in salary cap hell and then they don't have anything to, to replenish with either and they're gonna have to they would like the cleveland browns are gonna have to start looking for bargain basement free agent guys and they're not gonna be able to keep some of their core players although some of them like miles garrett already locked up i think chubb just locked up denzel ward was locked up before so some of the top ones are still there but they're that influx of guys coming in at the top of the draft and and they're, they're, that gravy train's over with. They're not even able to go out and get a Greg Newsome now to add right. to this roster. And that could have been a position the Steelers were in. Now, the Steelers didn't even give up anything to go get Kenny. He let him fall to 20. Like I said, I thought it was going to be Malik Willis because I thought maybe a team, Detroit, are they going to be happy with Jared Goff? Or the Saints, they got multiple picks. Will they go somewhere? Um, you got Davis Mills with the Texans. And I'm missing a team somewhere in here that I thought could have been, well, the Eagles weren't necessarily, you didn't know that they were sold on Jalen Hurts. They had had a few picks the jets did but they had zach wilson so a lot of teams had like guys in place that maybe they weren't going to go and stretch out and go take kenny pickett but my thought was wow 19 other selections i'm not going to say 19 other teams 31 other teams because somebody else could have easily jumped in front of the steelers at like 18 if they felt yeah. they can they evaluated kenny pickett as the guy so i'm thinking do 31 other teams have this wrong let's wait and see this might end up and this is really jumping the shark right now but this might be in the same category as talking about like aaron Rogers being looked looked over and passed upon or um let's not, let's not compare him to Mr. Overrated. It's the same haircut. Okay, Dan Marino. That's really jumping the shark, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not ready to go in either one of those directions yet. <laughs> I know, I know, but uh, you, you see my point is that the Steelers didn't have to pay a hefty price tag salary or compensation or trade wise or anything else and they might have their guy and how much does that stick in the craw? of a team like the Cleveland Browns who would have had a draft pick ahead of the Steelers last last draft had they not traded and done all of these shenanigans to give the largest guaranteed contract in the history of man to the Cleveland Browns. So thank you, Cleveland, because if you royally screwed your franchise up, you're about to screw up the Baltimore Ravens as well because Lamar doesn't want to come back and play. It's pretty obvious that uh, and they don't want to pay. So now they might have to blow up. You heard um, uh, on the game well, Sunday yeah, night. On the game, yeah, they, I mean, they we're talking look, about that. I, blow up the whole system. You're the first guy. I don't want to give, give you credit. Chris Collingsworth credit for saying I'll anything you, good. Wait, hold on. I got to give you credit because back when Lamar was available and we were still doing these shows and it was audio only, you're the one who said whoever ends up taking this guy, they're going to have to gut the way they play their offense and get the different personnel and a whole different system in in order to allow for the running quarterback schemes of a Lamar Jackson. That was all you, bro. Kudos to you. Absolutely. So you don't have to give well, credit to Collins worthless. Okay. But I mean, it, I'll give him credit for acknowledging the fact that it's that is where they are now, right? They have they have absolutely geared their offense to Lamar. And if they don't bring him back, they've got to scrap the whole damn thing. And that puts them in a huge hole. Um, you know, so you kind of have already thrown the dice, right? It's not even you're like, okay, well, I don't know yet. And again, it's rough. He's a guy that hasn't finished the last two seasons <laughs> on top of everything else. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? If you're the Baltimore Ravens, you, you, you made that bed. You're going to have to lie in it now. Absolutely. And that's a good segue here. I think maybe, I don't really know. Uh, About beds and lying in them, beds and lying in them. You don't want to be all hairy and scraggly or whatever. We're going to remind everyone that the steel city underground podcast is brought to you by manscaped. Da, 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 da. They're the best in men's below the waist grooming. Their products are precision engineered tools for those family jewels. Brian, don't stick anything up your nose or in any other orifice while I'm doing. I don't do. I don't stick this. anything in any other orifice. <laughs> That's out. Yes. Uh, don't forget about the performance package, the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over seven million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer to you. 
you get 20 percent off and free shipping yeah, with the promo code i'm just code. bringing out the, the light thing oh yeah well it's uh, but, that's an awesome it, it is precision engineer oh, tools my battery's dead my light oh you got to recharge fire. it but it but it comes with its own chart rechargeable uh little portable station that you can bring with you and and fits it all does. into a nice grooming bag yes it does you it's clearly know i don't know how to use this yet. well the, the <laughs> nose hair trimmer wasn't rechargeable There's my bag so. is in here this is my this is the chargers in this bag oh yeah and it gave you all kind of other goodies that end up coming with it over uh with that package too there's uh well you can see it all here there's like there's lotions and toners and all sorts of good stuff. The nose hair trimmer, and there's more that's coming very soon. So get 20% off and free shipping over at manscaped.com with the promo code steel city 20. And we'd like to thank once again, manscaped for being a uh, partner and sponsor of the steel city underground podcast. And I know sometimes we repeat the same things over and over with them. Uh, but, uh, check it out. I mean, that thing Brian was holding right there. It's waterproof. The, the trimmers are waterproof. Um, it Charger. Helps, helps very exciting. Mix. Yeah. And I believe it's a USB C on the back of that too, if I recall correctly. So. It is, but uh, they only give you a USB C to USB. But that's cord. okay because, like, when you're traveling with but that they give stuff, you a plug. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to carry multiple of that. You could charge that thing if you need to while on vacation. Charge your phone at night, whatever. Charge the good thing while you're out in a hotel room during the day. Uh, uh, there, there it is. Let's get a full screen. Hold on. Put that on the full screen. Uh, there you go, man. <laughs> All right. Get that twenty percent off. Free shipping. Manscaped.com. Promo code Steel City twenty. And maybe we'll talk. We'll talk about Steelers offense now versus um, Browns. Almost said Baltimore defense. So we've been jumping around the AFC North. We may as well at least mention the elephant in the room uh, when it comes to the playoff scenarios or scenarios with the Pittsburgh Steelers because there is a game that has not been finished yet, and we don't know if it's going to be resumed between the oh, Cincinnati Bengals and Buffalo Bills and Damar Hamlin and, oh, man. So thoughts and prayers, of course, go out to him. It's, uh, I, I, I heard the news earlier, I believe, unless I read this incorrectly, that he's now awake. Doing better. Yeah, yeah doing at least better. awake. Um, uh, improved is what I read. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a... Um, the doctor said after DeMar Hamlin awakened last night, he asked in writing who won the game. Doctors told him, yes, you won. You won the game of life. So talk about pretty cool. That came from Adam Schefter uh, reporting that. So, yeah, um, I understand that that's, um, that's tough. And the Steelers were in the same position with Ryan Shazier about five years ago, and they continued that game. I, I wouldn't think that would be any less mentally taxing on any of those players. All of those I, guys... Yeah. I, I know, like, I know the individuals themselves, one, like, maybe pronounced dead on the field practically with CPR and the other being paralyzed. But in either set of circumstances, the players are thinking, what if I get hit like that? Or what if I hit someone like that? And that's me on the field in either one of those scenarios. And it's crazy to think those both happened in Cincinnati primetime games. Yeah. Um, Cincinnati's just not a good place. They need to burn that stadium to the ground. <laughs> Pay or old Paul Brown. Antonio Brown also got, um, his whole to yeah. adjusted for, he for sure life. He sure did. Yeah, yeah so for he life went, is right. Yeah, he went cuckoo because Avante's perfect there. And not, not to make jokes or, in, you know, be lighthearted. Uh, you know, again, thoughts and prayers go out to Damar Hamlin. Really cool to see the toy drive and everything like that. The Mike Tomlin link, Pittsburgh links and everything like that. Uh, so, you know, you wish the best for him. Those two teams are going to be playing Sunday. So they still, and they have a short week because they were Monday Night Football. So you got to got to wonder what's going to happen i but are they uh, did you did you read the report from joe joe burrow talking about the they're talking about not playing against the ravens um how do they I, do that there's always so many guys you could sit out and, I, and they still gotta play you. for the division don't they i mean and i know the bills result still hinges on that can ultimately screw the ravens could ultimately screw up the steelers playoff oh, chances too but now the bills if the bills had lost Monday night, there's a good chance they might not, they might sit people in anticipation of not having any type of buy or anything to play for when they play the Patriots. So the two scenarios are the Bills have to beat the Patriots and the Jets have to beat the Dolphins, who might be starting Skylar Thompson because Teddy Bridgewater got hurt and two is still in concussion protocol. Those are both plausible scenarios here that are happening in that one o'clock window on Sunday. Yeah. Do you remember last week I said the, and I, I've repeated this all week long, the fly in the ointment was always the Jets at the Dolphins, right? Forget that it's Skylar Thompson. The Jets just look like a hot mess. Um, if you watch that Jets-Seattle game, you just can't imagine them beating anybody. 
Now, that being said, you got a better chance if Skylar Thompson plays. But I'm going to tell you that after the events of Monday night, I have no idea how the Bills are going to focus and beat the Patriots either. Um, you know, that is just such a drain. Remember how the Steelers came out after, as you talked about, after the Shazier injury. Yeah. How do you refocus yourself? And it's not just, okay, well, this is on the hedge coach. This is just humanity. You saw a guy nearly lose his life on the field. And you still don't know everything that you need to know. Yeah, you're going to go back to work. Yeah, you got to play again. But, you know, how much are you really refocused and trying to win that game and 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 committed to it? You've got to be heart sick. Um, and, you know, it takes a lot to be up and play these games. And, you know, the Patriots are going to try and win because – I, I think they're still in contention. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I believe. Um. I believe they're winning in. Uh. Now. Dol I think are, the Dolphins have to lose maybe, too. Though. Yeah. Maybe the Dolphins have to lose, but they they they're in a must win situation. They're both yeah. obviously both in must win situations, and one yeah. may need help more than the other. I don't remember the tiebreaker in the AFC East between those two because, quite frankly, to be honest, folks. I don't care. I only care about the Steelers making this thing. I still think the Jets can do it. Magic Mike White, but there's just another scenario there when you're talking about did the Steelers luck out with Kenny Pickett falling to him? Uh, you know, the, Joe Burrow is going to be there for years to stay, but the other two teams, they don't know what their quarterback situation is. This could be an entire mess if Watson doesn't turn it around. And, you know, he got lucky that Washington turned the ball over as much as they did last week, because if it wasn't for that, I think Washington's still in their conversation, even with Taylor Heineke or pretty much just anyone other than Carson Wentz. They might be playing Sam Howell. Did you see that? I think oh he might be getting God. the start. Yeah, another guy. I, I believe that you did not like much like Mac Jones uh, a couple of years Doe ago. Doughboy. Yeah. Our boy Doughboy. <laughs> there we go. Come on, Doughboy. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's take a Put look. Put up a big Doughboy numbers for us against the Bills, please. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I mean, he got benched for uh, Bailey Zappi. Like that's not even a play. That's that's like a name. Uh, you, that's a, that's, that's not an a, action, isn't that? Bailey got zappied. Yeah, that, that's an action. That's that's, 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 that's not, not a football not, player name. That's, that's not a name. You know, Sauce Gardner. Like that's 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 a, a name. football name. That's a football name right there. Najee Harris is a football name. Football even name. Pick, Bailey Zappy, Mac Jones. Is this just like you know? These are like the default. It, it was when you played Nintendo football games back in the day and they didn't have the NFL licensing. Those are the names that they ended up putting in place of like, you know, Troy Aikman maybe, or something. Maybe that's what happens. She's <laughs> playing tech mobile or some crap like that. And she's like, Oh, Bailey Zappi is my quarterback. Fine. I'm yeah. going to name my kid Bailey Zappi <laughs> QB Eagles. So yeah. um, looking at the injury report and we have some other updates uh, uh, on top of, um, I got to find it now because we just got some day two updates while we've been yakking away. Uh, let's see if this has been updated officially from the team. Yes, it has. So this is good news. And we could show this on the screen now. Um, da -da -da. Well, I got to pull it up first. There we go. Uh, so now we have a full practice. A lot of guys were DMPs Wednesday. So let's just bring that up real quick. Deontay Johnson, Trey Norwood, Najee Harris, Arthur Millette, Minka Fitzpatrick, Miles Jack, Kevin Dotson, Larry Oak, and Joby. Now, uh, the ones that carried over in this conversation uh, into Thursday's practice would be Arthur Millette with an illness, Mika Fitzpatrick with an ankle, Miles Jack with a groin, Cameron Hayward day of rest, and Larry Ogajobi with a toe injury. Now, as we've said for countless weeks, Larry Ogajobi usually will then practice on Friday and he'll be a go on Sunday. Uh, Deontay Johnson is full. That's good for him. That's really good for him because that's been nagging him. Trey Norwood limited, Najee Harris full, but that was a day of rest. Mallet sick, so he should be back. Uh, Minka, I would expect, takes the same path as Larry Ogunjobi. Yeah. Ogun uh, James Pierre, full practice participant despite being in concussion protocol. That could be important for special teams where the Steelers have been lacking, where they have had injuries and Ooh. had to have some people play in there. You cannot have that happen, uh, particularly in this game. Let's see, who did I leave off with? Alex Highsmith showed up limited with an ankle. Maybe he got dinged in practice. Uh, Kevin Dotson was back, full participant with the shoulder injury. And then uh, we already mentioned Cam, day of rest, Larry Ogajobi. So that's on the Steelers' side of things. But one more that we'll throw out there. You may have forgotten the Steelers traded for William Jackson the third before that window closed, and they set him on IR. He has returned to practice. And will they 
plug him in for this important game. That is an interesting topic of discussion, as uh, would be Akela Witherspoon, who was also in the same situation last week, but not activated. So they may actually get not just one, but two corners back for this one. That could prove to be a little bit of a problem for Deshaun Watson. Uh, looking over at the, let's see if we got the Cleveland Browns updates. Oh, hey, Steelers decided to update their website finally. So that was uh, that's a good thing. <laughs> they were only showing the Browns injuries yesterday, which that kind of drives me crazy. You go, you want the official, you want the real news. You want the official news. Um, but the Browns have only updated one day's worth so far on their end. So taking a look at who, um, did not practice. These are all DNPs from Wednesday's practice. Joel Batonio, uh, not injury related. He's getting rest as is Jadavian Clowney. I kind of forgot that he even played for them. Jack Conklin with an ankle He's been kind of uh, dealing with this for a while himself. Amari uh, Cooper got a day of rest, as did Miles Garrett. Dearness Johnson, he's a like third string running back. He's capable. He can he can hammer it just like a Jalen Warren. So I, I mm -hmm. won't. Yeah, I, I won't necessarily dis I won't disparage his good name. D Ernest reminds me of D Ernest saves Christmas, uh, but he's out with a uh, with a shoulder on Wednesday. Denzel Ward as well, same injury, shoulder injury, did not practice. We'll see. I anticipate Ward will probably be. It. Most of these guys will be out there or try and play. Um, Steeler, or and, and you know, I didn't talk enough about it though. But the Browns' offensive line, I don't think any better than what Baltimore had out there. And Baltimore had some lingering issues as well, like Ronnie Stanley. So Morgan Moses, those guys were hurt. So same thing happening maybe with Jack Conklin or Petonio. We'll, we'll, we'll see. This will all uh, dovetail into what you're going to talk about at some point, which is who the ref is. Um, uh -huh. or, you know, and look, I'm just going to tell you, if the bear hugging contest that was allowed to go on last week in Baltimore continues, it won't really much matter. The, the number of holding calls that were misobserved by the refs who have sh shaded glasses on uh, was so, so egregious and so bad. Brian, um, they wear their sunglasses at night. You know, yeah, yes, they do. So they can, <laughs> so they can. Um, and look, you know, we have to we, we have to get ourselves one of those little like I have to get you the ref stink thing so that when I come on and I say the ref stink, you can throw the ref stink little thing up there like like, like we do with the manscaped yeah. yeah we have to get that thing i have to we have to we have to start getting more creative man <laughs> uh, we could do that i mean here we'll just do it again yeah. and just, we'll pretend this go. time got that bush. says that doesn't say manscaped got bush it just says the ref stink the ref stink yeah. and then then when we want to say cam hayward is a grown-ass man we could throw the grown-ass man one up it's all yeah. good okay yeah. we're, we're capable we're cap we've got the we have the technology we can make it better than it we was. We can make it better. <laughs> I'm looking at some improvements. We had a me, me and Flash had a topics bar, but you and I, we don't need we don't need that stuff. We don't need bullets. I didn't have time to put one together. I quite actually, I forgot that we were using that on uh, earlier in the week for the other post for the Ravens post game. So um, it totally threw me off. You said something about officiating. Oh, that's right. It was uh, it's Cleet Blakeman who always yeah. somehow every year gets one or two AFC North contests and completely botches them. Uh, the Steelers have avoided this nitwit all season long until now in the game that matters. Expect at some point some sort of video. It may not even be a video review. He's going to be standing, fiddling in his pockets with his cronies on the field, looking for loose change or lint or whatever might be in there. The, I don't understand it. It always perhaps happens with this perhaps crew. There's a tiny brownie that's in there. A tiny brownie. No, you wouldn't tiny be that brownie. lucky. A little the top of the morning to you. So, <laughs> like, but no, he's it's terrible. He's been awful. The only time he's never been awful is when the Steelers put this game so far out of reach that he, nothing he does can affect this game. And the Steelers aren't quite in that category just yet, as you had mentioned. Uh, oh, no. The, the, the reasoning, the four and two minute drills at the end of each half are absolutely crucial to this team. It's where Kenny and even Mitch Trubisky, dare I say, have excelled this season. Uh, I think that the Steelers match up very, very well against this Browns defense. Um, the Browns aren't necessarily, what are you going to say, uh, turning heads as far as their um, 
their ability to defend the pass, their their uh, well, def- their ability to defend the run. I mean, they're 25th in the league. They give up 134 rushing yards per game against the pass. They're seventh. That's because everybody just runs the ball. They don't have to throw the ball. And if you're not asking Kenny to throw 30, 40, 50 times in this game, this is going to behoove the Steelers' offense. It should help them. And hopefully Chris Boswell has got all the kinks worked out, and he's 100% because they're going to need some points off of his foot as well. Uh, I just – Cleveland hasn't been good passing the ball themselves on offense. They're 22nd. They're in the same category, 204 yards per game, and the Steelers 201. They run for 147 a game. The Steelers run for 120. So there's a lot of mirror image stuff here. The Steelers have been lacking more against the pass over the course of the entire season, 225 yards. But against the run, they have been very stout, even going back to earlier in the season, 106 yards per game. That's good for seventh in the league, even with that 215 that they gave up against Baltimore in the very first uh, encounter between these two teams. Over and under is a surprising 40 and a half points oh! for this one, Brian. They're in the territory oh! north of 40 for a change. They think what these the two hell? teams will not play it close to the belt as much as the Ravens and the Steelers did. I had a buddy, a uh, good good friend of mine. He was the best man at my wedding. He's a Browns fan. Again, bring it back up. Browns fan. He put a bet. Sports betting went live in Ohio January 1st. He couldn't go anywhere without seeing it. He put a bet on the on the over of the Steelers Ravens game. I said, I'm not feeling that one, brother. And then we're right on that one, even with the 35 and a half or we're in the Whoa, whereabouts. 40. Yeah. St- Steelers are minus two and a half. So uh, they're favored as they should be at home. That's about the field goal point flip type thing that you would see yep. in this one. So all sides and indications are pointing to maybe we get a little more offensive firepower out of this one. But if the Steelers can do as they did last year against what's mostly the same motley crew uh, and uh, of the Browns defense, they ran the ball down Cleveland's throat and Ben Roethlisberger's farewell game, and they're going to want to do the same in order to keep Mike Tomlin above 500 and have their shot at the postseason. You're, you are, you're, you're dead on. You want to know what the keys are to this game. It's run the ball and don't get behind, right? Run the ball and play good defense. That's if, if they can run the ball, which – you, know, you you were throwing those numbers out here, and this is where stats, again, stats get to be misleading, right? Steelers may only average on a year 126 right now rushing, but the Steelers are a up, you know, they are a trending up rushing team. Yes. So it's not like that takes into account a lot of games early in the season where their rushing was for poo-poo. Um, the <laughs> offensive line. Uh, uh, what? It was poo-poo rushing oh, numbers. Okay. Very poo-poo. It was for poo-poo. Uh, <laughs> And, you know, they have the offensive line trending up. All right. You've got you've got the right mix to to take this game and try and play old school football. Good defense, solid running attack, throw when you need to and just keep the game enough out of reach that you win. Um. I will tell you that I'm not asking the. I haven't asked the bobblehead in many times. I, I I get. I told you my CEO called me right, told me to rewrite the everything I was I had done for the last two years. <laughs> in a week, he also told me the first thing he said to me when he saw me. He's like, "Where's the mohawk?" Oh, and I said, "Here's the thing. I I let it grow. I shaved it off because I I don't remember why. But ever since it's been gone, the Steelers have been on this trend." Right. I, I can't have the Mohawk until they lose. So I don't want them to lose. So I am not, you know, I'm not shaving the Mohawk. I'm, and in the same way, I haven't had the bobblehead show up. Yeah, and make leave any, him out of there. Make, the Kenny bobbleheads enough. That's all. He's There's out. only room not, for one bobblehead in the, on this show. I have two. So, but <laughs> <laughs> are they both but, you? Uh, they're both of your char- character. He said there's only room for one. Oh, but they're different. Like the other one looks like that other one looks like Heisenberg. I See this one, I could have make the make the prediction because yeah. he's no mohawk. He's got no mohawk. Yes. the mohawk guy, he can't do it. He's that one's go. like Sorry, crazy. Go. Like that one's like a the the one with the mohawk looks like something out of like American Ninja Warrior or something. Well, yeah, that was that. I got that one when I did a Spartan run or something like that. Very cool. Um, and anyway, my point being, I'm not asking the mohawk bobblehead who's going to win. Um, 
it, it is as much as we trash talk the Browns, they could absolutely win this game. I think the Steelers will win this game. They certainly have more to play for than the Browns do. Um, you know, but the Browns would certainly love to spoil any chance that the Steelers have of having a, a happy new year. So I, I'm going to say the Steelers probably win. I'm going to say that maybe it's a touchdown, maybe it's a field goal, but I don't expect this to be super high scoring at all. Yeah. And I'm trying to, um, in the background here, I'm putting together some before the buy and after the buy Steelers, um, you know, you say stats don't say everything, but just to show how this team has improved over, over time. Um, and of course I don't have it necessarily, uh, perfected here. So before the buy, they were scoring 15 points per game on offense and giving up a 24.6. So you rounded up 25 points. So 15 and 25, right? Uh, since the buy, they're averaging 20 on offense, a slight uptick, but only giving up 16.8 or 17. So they're giving up about a touchdown less per game, uh, which has made the, the huge difference, obviously having TJ Watt back in the fold. Let me mention this real quick too, because I had the thought and we jumped off of it, but Mark Robinson, a lot of people excited. He's in there. He's a run stuffer, much like Robert Spillane. I don't think they're the guys you want in there and, uh, pass coverage, but they might roll the dice again because they saw how well that worked regardless. And then they might dare Deshaun Watson to do something with his arm. I, I beg them to give Mark Robinson uh, enough snaps so that at some point he levels the crap out of somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I'm, I'm with you there. Uh, so let me see. I said 15 and 24.6 and if you come around on the other side, since the bye week, Steelers offense now averaging 20 points while only giving up 16.8. If you take a look at the Steelers rush offense prior to the bye week, they uh they were only at, they weren't even averaging 100 yards per game on the ground. So they weren't really getting anything done there. They had no traction. Um they were averaging about 95 yards, 94.8, okay? Uh, you take a look at post-buy, and they're at 146 and a quarter. They're at 145. Brian, did you hear what I said earlier when I was talking about the Cleveland Browns and I had mentioned how many yards per game they average with their sixth-ranked rushing offense? I just said 146 and a quarter, didn't I? The Browns yeah. are 147 for the season. The Steelers are trending upward. They're just as dangerous now running the football as what the Cleveland Browns purport to be. So I, I, I really like the chances of this game. You said, no, nope, get behind. That's always the case. That's what it always will be. They, and they never listen. Clearly, they never listen. <laughs> no, they want but... to they give us all like as much anxiety as possible. And we'll see if we have any more, if we have bonus football after this. So we're going to find out. Be nice. It would be nice. Uh, that Bengals and Bills game, darn it, a lot hinged on it and might still after that, not to mention like my uh, much smaller in the microcos microcosm of all of the major things out there, but a lot of people probably in fantasy football limbo as well. Um, they yeah, end I, up play I, I really don't care about oh, that. Oh, I know, but it's like it's an <laughs> unprecedented thing. At least, you know, I, I've never had a league where we've set a week 18 roster and played a championship week 18 so a lot of the championships are hanging because like for example i had joe burrow and i was up against stefan diggs and and stuff like that uh so i know it's it that's like completely unimportant as opposed to some young man's health obviously but yeah. it's just some unprecedented things that also hinge on all of that i heard that a lot of people who would place their bets uh on that Bills Bengals game had already been refunded or money, which I find very interesting because I don't think you could rebet on a game. They're not going to restart from zero zero. If they do, they're going to restart from they're going to resume that game. It's suspended official terminology. So they would restart down in distance and uh, you know, game situation from where they left that one off. Uh so that'll be pretty interesting stuff if they do end up ever finishing that game. Uh I and I'm just gonna give you my take. I with the news that 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 the the young man is awake and is communicative, communicative, um, I, I think that they'll figure out a way to play the game or try to. I think part of what you're part of what 
the the I don't know what to do is is because you don't know what the what the outcome of the young man's health situation is going to be. And until you have some clarity there, how do you focus? Because there's no way his there's no way. Quite frankly, either one of those teams can easily just push this off, right? You know, I I, I saw some nonsense about somebody, you know, slighting T. Higgins or saying, you know, T. Higgins. Bart Scott. Yeah, idiot. Yeah. You're an idiot. Well, he's a reformer. That young man has, well, there you go, clearly, and a jet. So what does that (laughs) that tell you? Um, But, you know, clearly that young man's got going to have some emotional trauma related to this. Um, it, both teams, you just can't see that and, and go through that and not have, you know, some, some wounds from, it. um, which is why I, you know, even, even as things progress, they may just not play that game. I mean, it may just be put off the books and marked down as a null. Uh, I don't know what that does to anybody, but it probably pisses off the Ravens. <laughs> Hey, uh, Steelers defense on average giving up over a hundred yards fewer in pass defense since the bye week as well. I thought that was they've pretty. They've played hot. They've played hot. And um, 117 you know. on the ground versus 95 on the ground, so about 20 ish. Of course, you know that Ravens one completely skews everything. But you take that Ravens game out, and over a seven game course, they they uh, the other games since the bye, they've only given up 78 yards per game running and you know it's gets the Bengals. Cole the Colts should have been able to run the ball I don't know what's going on with the offensive line Falcons and Carolina Panthers are both run oriented teams Josh Jacobs with the Raiders and of course the Ravens the second time around uh so the bounce and boomerang back around to that Ravens are affected lots of teams are affected and if the Bills and Bang- Bills and Bengals not finishing that game they were going to be on a short week. They didn't play a full game. Now they still had to travel and the practice and everything like that. How does that affect the competitive balance of the games that they will play in on Sunday? Should they play? You were saying something about that, but I think the league doesn't want to tip their cap. Roger Goodell in particular is probably salivating at the opportunity to say that this game is like a play in type game that can be played and resumed after everything, but they can't make any judgment on that and then scale the tips of competitive balance. Otherwise, to where, you know, the Bills are just like, well, well we're, we're in and we're in this seed because we're not going to resume and the Bengals don't have a chance. And then, then play me, people start sitting everybody. Let's say the Bills win. Uh, let's say the Bills beat the Patriots and the Ravens or in the, and the Bengals beat the Ravens. They both win. Is the And let's say that the Chiefs win. All right. So does the number one seed hinge on the outcome of the Bengals-Bills game? Uh, well, the... Kansas City Chiefs are at 13 and 3 right now and I do believe that the Bills still had a running if they won out to be the number 1 seed and get the only bye that's available. Remember there's only one bye week now to the top seed in each conference when they expanded the 17 uh 17 playoff. The Cincinnati Bengals uh are sitting at 11 and 4 and the Bills are sitting at 12 and 3. So if the Bills were at 13 and 3, they would have the same record right now as the Kansas City Chiefs heading into Sunday. We'll just say like we'll say that game finished on Monday, right? And if the Bengals would be at uh 12 and 4, they still could be playing for something cuz let's just say Las Vegas would end up beating Kansas City, then the Bengals could jump could jump ahead of them. They would share the same record as well. It would be twelve and four on Sunday, or right. you know, so just as a, a a hot off the presses, the AP is announcing is is reporting that 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 the game will not be resumed. Ah, so man, the percentage things really screw it up, and we have no idea if everything that we just said will. Um, uh, end up uh, if the Steelers still have this shot, but they're still going to be playing at least four. Uh, I, I think that they are still playing. Like you're talking about the seventh seed, right? Yeah. For the Steelers, they're still. If the if the things go the way that we have outlined it, right? Bills win, Jets win, Steelers win, then they're in. I don't think that can change, right? I don't think any of the stuff with the other things. It's just it can't cascade down far enough to hit the seventh seed, but. The the problem is whether the Bills game is now important enough to the Bills for them to p- try and win. So, hey, 
Patriots are not exactly a perfect team either. And no, they've not. had all uh, this still goes back to the um the, the Steelers playing both the Patriots and the Jets earlier this year. Win one of those games. Win win the Dolphins game that we yeah. were at. Yeah. So one there, of those games would have been the thing. There you yeah. go. There's the official from Pro Football Talk is rumoring uh that the AP reports the NFL won't resume the Bills Bengals game. It's a likely precursor official announcement. I know some people are talking about uh, take all the mental and everything else, uh emotional aspect out of it and just the logistics. They can't move the Super Bowl. But they have right. this Pro Bowl games where they're not even playing a game that that's usually pre-taped and edited for TV to begin with. That, and they used to have it after the Super Bowl. They could anyway. move that. Yeah, they could move that. And then <laughs> and then the guys that are in the Super Bowl could actually participate in it. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, I don't think it hurts anything. None of these games are scheduled for the postseason right now. You don't know who's playing Saturday, Sunday, or otherwise. Uh, so it, and, you, and some teams have sold playoff tickets, and they don't even know if their team's going to be in it. Uh, that that's that says to be determined, you know, kind of card subject to change type of thing. Uh, that could be moved back. And yeah. I think ESPN wouldn't mind the revenue for advertising, everything like that. There's, there's still a lot of money that's involved and on the line on this. So it would surprise me if they, they didn't find a way at the flip side, I could also see where they wouldn't. And it's, 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 it's unprecedented and it's more so unprecedented because these two teams are currently the two and three seeds in the AFC. Uh, it's just, it's wow. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how any of that ends up. Ends up getting handled, Brian. Um, uh, again, unprecedented, uncharted waters. Just, uh, I'll leave it at that. We'll put a bow on the show, folks. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, everything else. Uh, don't don't forget, stuff. I got tickets. He's got DM tickets. me at Cannons Don't Thunder. Well, yeah, forget uh, the Cannons Don't Thunder. There's no dud it's at the, Cannons Don't Thun. Dude, it's <laughs> it's right there. It's it's on right there. It, yeah. Look, wait. Where, wait, where's my hand? At, there it is. There it is. No. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. it is over there. Okay. Yeah, it's there. right there. Yes. For those of you listening to audio only, I'm pointing at at cannons don't thun. That's his Twitter um, handle, which yeah, doesn't at, make any it, sense, but the, it does. It's supposed to be at cannons. It, cannons don't thunder. There's nothing to plunder. I'm an over forty victim of fate. Don't make me quote Jimmy Buffett songs. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. All right. You're, you're, I didn't know you were a parrot head. That explains a lot of things. I, I, Maka is the I officially am spray. not a parrot head. Like I refuse, <laughs> I've only seen Buffett once and he was 70 something when I saw him. Wow. Um, but he probably but, still, he probably still rocked for his, Oh, he was awesome. Yeah. Was he's, 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 he's a, he's a brand all of himself. So yeah. I, even though I am not a parrot head, I'm not like anti like Jimmy Buffett either. I'm just kind of like, Hey, if it's on like, Hey, I kind of, I, I like Jimmy out. Buffett and I particularly have an affinity for that song. <laughs> that's all that's awesome uh it's okay man it's okay i gotta tease i keyed i keyed but somebody's gonna look at that it's a cannon with two n's so c-a-n-n-o well i never claimed i could spell correctly yeah but it's not the same as canon printers either so it's um i don't know if that's right or not it is for a large caliber gun so i believe you are that's what it is cannons don't thunder and then the other way would be probably canon where people get upset about star wars not following certain things from expanded universe and blah 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 now it's legacy and everything and i don't get into any of that either uh so who cares disney hit the reset reset switch we might be doing the same we'll see if there's some bonus football coming up for us folks that'll do it for myself joe kuzma and my colleague and cohort here one mr brian e roach until next time, please do join us on the next time. We're going to have lots of things to talk about, whether there is an extra game or we head into the off season. We've got some topics that have been tabled for that period of time. So join us then again. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and wherever you may be watching or listening. Thanks for supporting Steel City Underground. Until that next time, we encourage everyone out there to be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website www.steelcityunderground.com